Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another episode of Games In, Games Out, where I talk about games going into my collection, games going out of my collection, and everything in between. So, first and foremost, we have Fun City, uh, which was not really that fun. It's just kind of walking around the board and randomly going to different places at different times, and hopefully you're by those places when you need to be by them. It's all a whole big pile of random. Not very good. I mean, the big shtick here is you got this clock in the middle of the table that, uh, like, keeps track of the time. It also pops up when a little old lady walks across the street and you help the little lady walk across the street. It does not live up to the nostalgia value. This is definitely one you're probably going to steer clear of. This one is going to be one I give away to one of the kids in my class. <coughs> Next we have Ninjitsu from Jelly Bean Games. A very mean game, a standalone slash expansion to uh, the Treasure Hunters Scuttle game, which is, and this is a really simple family weight game where essentially you're just going to have cards and you're either going to play the cards face up to give you points play the cards face down to give you points but potentially also to be traps or attack people with all the various different attack cards i like this game i'm keeping this game because they're actually putting another game in the line i think it's a, a werewolf game maybe it was i'm not quite sure but it's incredibly mean so this one i enjoy my son enjoys even though he did end up crying a good deal uh, when, when I taught him the game. But it is a mean game, but still an enjoyable game. Next we have Channel A, the anime pitch party game. This is one I'm not going to be keeping in my collection. It's a party game where you have to make up uh, different shows based on words that you have, and it's pretty fun. I enjoyed it a good deal. I'm going to give it to my friend who has all my party games because eventually he's just going to have all the party games in the world, but not one I'm going to keep in my own personal collection. Next we have Exit, The Abandoned Cabin. This is a really enjoyable game in the Exit series where you're trying to escape an abandoned cabin, and I liked it an awful lot. It's really highly ranked on Board Game Geek, and uh, I'm excited to play some more of the Exit games. I don't want to tell you too much about it, but it's fun. I enjoyed it a good deal. Plus, this one I do want to mention, uh, we didn't actually, we're able to reuse this, so I'm actually going to give this to a buddy of mine, because while we folded some things, we didn't tear anything, we didn't rip anything, so you still can replay this one. So Exit the Abandoned Cabin, get some more bang for your buck out of that one. Next we have Bad Moji, <laughs> really, it, it's a fun, funny game, but it's not spectacular, where you're going to have cards, and these cards are going to have emojis on them, and then you have to try and figure out what the emojis are telling you, and all the things they're telling you are somewhat dirty things, like Stinky Pinky, or a Pocket Pool, or various different stuff like that. If you're in the market for a game like this, this one does a good job of doing it. If you're not, then obviously this is a hard pass. This is going to my buddy, once again, who has all my party games. Next we have Blockbuster, the party game. I really like this one, and actually I'm going to be keeping this one in my collection. This is a, uh, it's, it's kind of a mashup of Trivial Pursuit and Time's Up, where you're going to be acting out different scenes from movies, or saying one word from a movie, or a, a quote from a movie, and you're trying to get other people to guess it, but there's a little bit more to it than that, and I really like this, plus the nostalgia value is strong obviously uh, this is what i think they got a hit on their hands i think this is uh obviously big potato is kind of well known for being in target and doing a lot of target games but i think this one is going to be a big seller for them because the game behind it is actually a really good game too i'd say a great game so this one keeping in my collection Next, we have The Game of Wolf, and this is odd. I'm actually going to be keeping two party games in my collection because I also think this is a great game as well. So this is a really interesting trivia game where you are going to be taking turns being the wolf, and the wolf uh, is going to know what the topic is. So the topic will be baseball teams or gemstones or meat or food or locations or, or fast food restaurants or princesses or just tons and tons of various different categories and depending on how much you know about that category you can either go as a lone wolf and try and beat everyone else at the table at this little five question trivia game or you can take someone with you based on who you think has the most knowledge on the topic so you're going to be in teams but you're constantly going to be shifting who's on your team and who you're working with I thought this was a great game. It worked really well in a uh, adults drinking kind of party style situation and also as a game night game if you're in the market for a lightweight filler game. Really enjoyed the game of Wolf. This one, very pleasant surprise. Uh, if you like trivia games, this is definitely one I'd recommend checking out. Next, we have Potion. So this is a game, this is one of those weird games. It's, it's actually based on this other game that was broken, like straight up broken based on the rules called Barista. I reviewed it, it was god awful, it was terrible, and I hated it. This, they decided, hey, this broken game, I think we could fix it. And they did to an extent. I still don't think it's a good game, but the kids in my class really like this game, and they are the they are the target mark for this. So if you find it at a thrift shop for dirt cheap and you have kids, then 
maybe check this one out for everybody else this is a hard pass so this is one that i'm actually going to be putting in my class and i already know the little girl is going to take it because her birthday is in fact today which is why i'm shooting this part of the video so i can bring it in the classroom and give it to her because uh when it's your birthday in my classroom you get one of the games from up on the shelf like fun city or potions or a bunch of the games that i don't want to keep next we have head of mousehold this is a spec spectacular uh i think i gave it like an eight uh eight 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 point two something like that lightweight filler game family weight game but it still has enough meat that you can play it as a game night game where you are trying to be the second mouse to get the cheese and there's gonna be a whole bunch of mouse traps set up and obviously the first mouse is gonna be the one that dies because you know that's how mouse traps work but if that first mouse trap is a squealer then the cat will come so sometimes you don't want to be uh even the second mouse you want to be the third mouse and sometimes you want to be the slow mouse because we've all had those stupid mouses that just kind of eat all the peanut butter in the trap and they take yeah but anywho this is a really great game this one flew under the radar it came out i think two years ago at gen con really like this one uh highly recommend head of mouse hold really good goes up to five players as well and it plays five players really stinking well this is a great lightweight filler game or family game works in both situations next we have love battle high school a game we're going to be walking around a high school taking various different actions and trying to you're going to pick one of these four gorgeous women or five gorgeous women at the beginning of the game who are all fawning over this guy right here for some reason and um you're gonna pick which one you think is gonna like you best at the end of the game and then your whole the whole game is just you moving people around and trying to uh make the hearts go up or down on the different people it's not a very good game but i will say this if you're interested in this type of anime and you don't play many games which i doubt is most people watching this video right now i would say that the, the target market for this game actually works really well so if you don't play games and you're into this type of anime, I think you actually will enjoy the game. Everyone else, this is a hard pass. So obviously out of my collection. Next we have Crudel. Uh, simple, strategic. This is actually a Kickstarter one that I've had for a very long time. I got a box over there. And, and in the box, it's a whole bunch of games that, that I was like, you know what? I'm going to play these games with my kids when they get older. But for the time being, you know... Uh, I'm not gonna be able to play them so I just put them in a box and that box sat there and collected dust for a very very long time there's some really good games in there this is you know I don't know it's it's a it's a prototype like what what the heck was I thinking keeping prototypes back in the day so this one I'm gonna put it up on the shelf for the kids to keep and uh, I know it is a solid game I don't remember anything about it but whatever what, what was I thinking now I got so many games I'm just overflowing with games there's games coming out of my ears and I'm keeping freaking kickstarters from six years ago next we got heroes welcome merchants of dragon reach this is a good game i thought it was a very good game but it just didn't do enough for me to keep in my collection where essentially you're going to be playing as these dragon uh, these goblin merchants and the heroes are going to go off and they're going to fight bad guys but you're going to armor the bad guys and then when the heroes come back they're going to bring you the armor and then you'll take apart the armor and you'll build more armor and it's like this big cycle it's a really interesting game uh somebody actually pointed out it reminds me a little bit of uh, a game i did keep in my collection which was what the heck was it uh smiths of winterforge which came out last year which i actually thought was a better game than this uh they argued that they thought this was a better game but since it's my collection ha 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 i gotta keep it uh i'm gonna keep smith and forge not keep this one it just did not do enough for me even though i will say the kickback expansion definitely is an essential one to this i think it's a very good game but not one that i'm gonna keep in my collection because the rules we're also a little bit lengthier than I might like them to be, and I'm not going to remember how to play the game. Last but not least, actually, that's a lie. We got two. Uh, Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time. I did a Kickstarter preview for this one. Uh, normally, when I do a preview for a Kickstarter, little fun fact here, it means that I don't recommend the game. This is one of those rare occasions where I absolutely do recommend the game. I think the game is fantastic, and I can't wait to get a final version of the game. The only reason I didn't do a final, ver uh, final review of it is because... I only got to play a couple scenarios of it, and there's going to be a whole bunch of more scenarios. But this is a really stinking cool, cooperative uh, tower defense game. Really well done. I like it an awful lot. It's based on a really popular uh, mobile game, I guess, which I've never played. Kingdom Rush, Lucky Duck Games. When this one comes out, this is definitely one you might want to check out. Very solid game. Even though it is going to have miniatures, which means the price is going to go up, which is unfortunate, but still, really, really cool cooperative tower defense game. Definitely recommend checking that one out. When it gets here, uh, I'm probably just going to, I don't know what, I'm probably just going to take the pieces out of this and um, just take the pieces out of that and let my class play with them. Next, we got The Potion from Foxmine. This is a really simple 
filler game in which you are just going to be rolling dice and then you're going to try to make the potions which will be uh, whatever the recipe is on the dice but everyone's going to be uh, trying to make those potions and only the people that exactly make the potion are going to be able to put their pieces in there it's really light it's really simple it's harder for me to explain now than it is I can teach it to you almost faster than it is to explain it uh, I will say I like the game an awful lot, even though the rule booklet doesn't fit in the container because it's got a really unique container, and so I had to like completely just grrr, stick a pen in there and jab out the rule booklet. But really cool game, uh, The Potion. Definitely recommend this one, and I'm going to be keeping this one as one of my go-to lightweight filler games. And also just a great game to throw into a book bag when you're taking, you know, going to a game night or something like that. Next, we got Googly Eyes from Goliath. This is uh, this is a really interesting game in which you're going to be wearing these glasses that are going to have different lenses on it. It's going to make it way more difficult difficult to draw and it's a drawing game where you're going to be split up into teams and trying to draw things for your team trying to guess them there's a timer to keep track of time and it has some absolutely terrible mechanisms it's got roll and move uh it's got lose a turn it's got some stuff that i absolutely hate and i think you're going to want to house rule a couple of them but the core game itself is really stinking fun and the kids that i played it with really enjoyed it the adults i played it with enjoyed it i think it's a good party game i think it's a great family game if you have a family large enough to accommodate it and googly eyes is what i can recommend as a family game uh, party game yeah there's better games out there but one that i am going to be keeping in my classroom collection next we got a two-parter we got stuff happens and the stuff happens parenting edition uh which are both going to be out of this box because i'm keeping them and i'm going to mix them with uh expletive happens which i also have a copy of which is the adult party game version of this i'm gonna mix them all together and in this game you're essentially just going to try and put cards in numerical order but unlike the mind these cards are going to have things on them like you get stabbed in the face by a hobo or your wife cheats on you or your kid poops the bed every night or stuff like that and you're trying to figure out which one is worse than every other one and they have little numbers on the back you put them in numerical order the first person to get 10 in a row wins the game if you've ever played uh timelines or card lines uh, where you're trying to put the things in order based on the numbers of the year this is very very similar i've had a blast with it i like the parenting edition slightly less than the base edition of stuff happens just because it's a little bit more niche but still both very good uh fun family games than fun party games as well that i'm going to be keeping i wish they had a bigger box though so i could store all of them next we got hannah honeybee from hobba games this one i am keeping for my son and i think i'll be keeping this probably for another about a four or five years so hannah honeybee is really simple it's in the my very first game line for ages two plus and it's a simple game you're gonna roll the dice you're going to be putting flowers into this uh this bees hive which actually is part of the box the box turns into a bees hive which is really stinking cool and it comes out honey and if you get six honey then you and your kids are going to win but the thing that i like about this game especially is there's two different versions of the game there's the base version of the game which is probably going to keep kids entertained until about four five six and they're going to start just not being interested but then there's also a memory uh game in there that is the base game plus a memory game mixed together and it really does add some legs to this game and i think i brought it in my classroom and played it with kids nine ten years old they still enjoyed the game so this one you're gonna get a lot of good bang for your buck on one i can recommend especially if you're in the market for a very young children's game my very first game's hannah honeybee definitely one i'm gonna be keeping for quite a few years probably even forever just because i'll play it when i have grandkids next game that we have going out of the collection we have alice matic from japan made games so this is a really stinking great game and i can't remember much else about the game the box doesn't tell you much it's a really weird shaped box i think it was an area control game if i remember correctly and i remember thinking it was great a hidden gem a true hidden gem in our hobby uh but since i've reviewed it and i played it and i played it and i reviewed it and it's went on my shelf and it's been sitting on there for two years so it's gone because the theme does absolutely nothing for me the artwork does absolutely nothing for me and i know it's a great game but i have no desire to open it up and figure out why so it's gone even though i know it's great which is unfortunate Continuing onward, we have Heart of Crown, the Path Before Heaven expansion. If you've never played Heart of Crown, it's a deck builder for Japan Made Games. It's great. It's a Dominion killer for, uh, I honestly think, even though I'm going to keep Dominion because I, I love Dominion. Uh, but it does a lot of things similar to Dominion, but I think some of them it does even better. And this is a small box expansion that's going to add, I believe, 10 new types of cards and a new princess because that's the big mechanism of the game is that you can get a princess, which is a really interesting decision which princess you take and when you take the princess. This makes that decision even better. And if you have Heart of Crown, get this. Just that simple. It's a great, great, great expansion. Uh, definitely one I can recommend. Of the three small box expansions I've played, this one is the best. 
So keeping that, putting it in the box. Next we have Exit the Forbidden Castle from Cosmos. This is uh, four out of five difficulty and I hated it. I hated it. I hated every second of it. It was not fun. I did not enjoy it and I love a challenge. I love to feel dumb and this game made me feel dumb but it felt dumb in a cheap way. We had three people working on it and it just it wasn't fun and the puzzles weren't great and we would find the solutions because we just get so frustrated. We'd find the solutions and be like, how, how are we, how, no, just no. It, it just feels like an exercise of like, ooh, look how clever we can be. At least that was my personal opinion. Now, I've seen some other reviewers where people said that it's great and it's the easy one. And I'm like, uh, no, dog. But I guess that's just how your brain works. For me personally, this is one that I did not enjoy, but it's not going to sour me on the series because I still like the exit series, but this one for me was personally a dud. Now, not to mention uh, some of them that you can replay them after you're done. This one, absolutely not. It is all busted up. It is all shredded. Uh, so this one's just pretty much immediately going into the trash. Next, we have Hydro Strike from Pressman. This is a game in which you are going to be uh, essentially playing two-player pinball where you got these little beep, 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 and you're going to be trying to knock this ball back and forth. But if you get it to the other person's goal, aka this little doodad that you're going to hit, they get sprayed in the face with water. And that's pretty much the whole game. Kids are going to love it. Adults are going to want to play it in short first because it is kind of fun to get sprayed in water and spray your kid in the face with water. It's great. Just that simple. If you have young kids, they're going to have a blast with it. But you need to know it's incredibly light, incredibly simple. This one is definitely one that I'm absolutely going to keep. If I didn't keep, my son would be super ticked off. Uh, I think this would be a great Christmas or birthday present as well. So Hydro Strike, uh, one that my son is really enjoying. Both my sons, three-year-old, six-year-old, and all the kids in my class. We had a big tournament actually playing it. So definite recommendation if you're in the market for a very, very light mass market style game. Last but not least this time, we have the giant elephant in the room, which is the Batman Gotham City Chronicles game, which is one that I'm torn on. I don't know whether or not to keep it. Now, this is just the base game. I don't have any of the extra expansions. In my review, uh, I, I slammed this game for a lot of things. For a lot. A lot of things. It's a pretty lengthy review. It's a pretty negative review in the cons. Because, you know, I don't pull punches. And this game does a lot really, really terribly. But when it goes right, it's a great game. And it's an outstanding Batman game. Which is where I'm having issues. Because this is one of those games where it's like, do I keep it until my son is old enough to play it? Because I know we're going to get hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of amazing Batman fun out of this game. And maybe even acquire some of the expansions along the way. Because you know they're going to milk this thing dry. Or do I get rid of it? Because it takes up a huge amount of shelf space and I could trade it for cash or potentially other great games that I absolutely am chomping in the bits to play. And therein lies the question. So this is one of the first ones that I really have a difficult time to deciding. Uh, I'm going to keep it though. I am going to keep it. The way I see it is the game itself is great and I'm probably only going to play it if I have everyone here on a game night and everyone knows how to play it and everyone really wants to play it. Which will happen from time to time. So it will get played from time to time, I do believe. But the other reason is that I'm excited to see what new content comes out for it. I want to have the ability to mix the content if they ask for me to review the next one, which they might not because I slammed it pretty hard. And I know some companies aren't the biggest fan of that. Uh, and also, I'm going to play with my kid when he does get older. So Batman Gotham City Chronicles is going to be staying in the collection for the time being. But I don't see it getting played too frequently unless, you know, someone in my game night happens to just be magically infatuated with this game from now on. Uh, but yeah, really hard game to review just because you wanted to love it. You want to love it so much. But man, the rule book was, oh, it's 50 plus pages of just ah, anger. But there you go. That's games in, games out. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that and little Amazon Associates link down in the show notes. Buy anything on Amazon. Uh, throw a couple of pennies my way. It really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know what was the last game that you purged out of your collection. Uh, well, for me, it was Alice Matic Heroes. Duh. But what's the last game you purged out of your collection? As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.